Hi everyone. Welcome to our weekly segment, our weekly tech topic. I'm Dave Bovin. I serve as the Dean of the School of Business and Technology at Chipola College. We have with us Ben Bridges, our co-host. Glad to be here. And Ben serves on the staff and as a student wrapping up his bachelor's in computer information systems. We're happy to have Ben involved as well. He has a wealth of knowledge and experience. So today um, we wanted to first begin by sharing some neat momentum we're having on campus. Dr. Clemens and some local college leaders had this great vision of everything we've gone through recently of that Chipola, at Chipola, we didn't just survive, we thrive. And so we've gone through a lot with the hurricane and different changes. And it seems like, Ben, we have this greater ability now to serve our stakeholders. Uh, as a student, you probably feel that your needs are being met. Do you have any, uh, this is kind of unplanned, <laughs> <laughs> but can you share your experiences of last year? You feel like there's even more opportunity on campus? How has this been, this ability for us to thrive, not just survive? I absolutely agree. Um, there's an unfortunate uh, cause for it, for, for this massive growth, but the growth itself has been tremendous and dramatic. And I do personally feel that Chipola has grown a lot over the year and more opportunities have opened and things like that. Well said. It seems like everything we've been through this last year gives us a chance to interact with more stakeholders, more constituents, and to even serve at, at a greater level. So exciting times. And we look forward to, if you haven't been affiliated with the college, of uh, reaching out, of interacting with you. you know, feel free to contact us. We're happy to have you in a class, partner with you on some local activity, some research endeavor. We're happy to uh, share in some of the fun things we're doing at the college. And in particular, we're looking at some laptops, some computer purchasing, some planning. Uh, for students is really our focus, but it could be for anybody. In the thought this week of our, our weekly tech topic of buying the right device that helps you find success, and we'll say at Chipola within the class environment, that could be as a student, as a faculty, as a staff working on projects. And I think we've broken this down into dynamics and performance. Yes. And so we have quite a few examples here, but we have a quite knowledgeable co-host and Ben, so we'll let him <laughs> kind of continue this segment and we'll see what we have in store for us for our additional comments. Sounds good. All right, Ben. Um, since school is starting to come back, people are starting to enter their first year of college, that can be a very daunting endeavor. A lot of people, uh, myself included at that time, did not really know where to go, what to do, especially when it comes to preparing for college. Now, having a personal computer is not necessarily uh, required for college. Uh, Chipola does offer devices and computers that you can utilize in the library and computer labs to complete your schoolwork. But having a device to complete your schoolwork at home is, in my opinion, very helpful. And nowadays, uh, there are many uh, millennials like yourself or post-millennials. Can you believe there are others even behind <laughs> you now that you're a veteran? Right, right? I feel old now. <laughs> <laughs> that are using smartphones for almost everything, which for me, I like to utilize a laptop, which we'll kind of get to here in a little bit. Uh, still a desktop in many situations. I live on my smartphone, but not for really work-related things, maybe email and texting and stuff. But there are many, uh, say, post-millennials, this is all they're familiar with is a smart device, which is fine. You can do almost anything you need to do in life on a smartphone, but it's just a different perspective. So that is uh, one example of maybe... Uh, performance or dynamics, you know, it'll fit kind of to both of those, which we'll get to here in a second. I agree. And uh, smartphones really are the Swiss army knife of devices nowadays. Yeah, well said. You can, you can do your schoolwork. You can, there's, you know, Microsoft Word, there's office applications. There's so much you can do and it's on your pocket, in your hand all the time. Um, and we will get to that in a few minutes. Uh, first, I'd like to discuss the foundations of understanding what you would like in a computer. Now, computers, they're, they're pretty simple. They're essentially just a calculator that does very specific functions uh, if you break it down to the basic, the most basic level. Um, but, you know, we're, we're not always just calculating ones and zeros. True. You know, uh, we're, we're processing words, we're... At the right we're papers every now and then. Yes, we're <laughs> a lot of those, um, you know, like registering for classes, emailing, keeping up with other students and things like that. So you really have to pick what device is right for you. 
in that sense. And there are a few technical specifications that are important when choosing a laptop or a computer. Um, first of all is mobility. Do you want a standalone desktop computer, one that would be you know, static and would not move from a room, or a laptop that you could take on the go uh, but would likely suffer a little bit on the performance aspect? Yeah, traditionally the desktop would be sought for large scale operations, say in a typical work environment where you have to process many um, items tied to a project or business activities right. or in a development environment where you need a lot of processing power. But those days have passed us. You now have that with many types of devices today. You're very correct. Uh, that is one of the one of a growing set of capabilities with more mobile devices. Cloud computing is making extremely processing heavy tasks easy to do on your computer and does not take up any performance because it is run in the cloud. And I believe we will make a episode about the cloud someday, but for now we'll, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, so laptops, mobile devices and all are becoming roughly equally in performance to standalone desktops excluding very, very powerful computers that would cost twice or three times as much as a laptop. Yeah, my transition to a laptop, which is what I live on these days, we had a segment earlier on different types of laptops, so this is kind of more just of a broad range discussion of technologies right. that can help serve you, say, as a student at Chipola or someone involved with the college and different activities, that mine was as a docking station, and so boy, maybe a decade ago or so, it was quite popular where you'd have a kind of a, a peripheral device that looked like just a third of this laptop and it would be on your desk and you would dock your laptop, you would attach it with prongs say in the back and then you would use your, your keyboard and your mouse as you would and your monitor so it would become a desktop and a laptop. Um, and so that was my first exposure but nowadays I don't even use a keyboard and mouse. Most of the time, I just love my laptop environment. So it's interesting to see how technology has evolved. I agree. They've become so much more ergonomic over the times. Well said. Now, for the specific technical specifications on choosing a laptop, uh, generally with education, you don't necessarily need that powerful of a computer. Um, in terms of power, I'm referring to processing power. That is normally done by the computer's processor, and, and in some cases that is done with the graphics processing unit, also known as the GPU. Uh, mobile devices normally have more lightweight GPUs, which unless you're doing things like animation, video editing, things like that, you likely won't need a GPU unless you want to have a hobby in 3D animation or gaming or things like that. And it is important to factor in your hobbies as well. You would you don't want to have a device specifically just for one task. You would want to have a device that can kind of meet all your needs. So be sure to look at the, the processing power of the computers you are looking at and ensure that it's meeting a certain benchmark that you would prefer. That could be a good segue into this beast that I have right here. <laughs> this Alienware laptop, this is quite large and Someday you might be able to, when you're watching video, kind of have a, a, a fourth dimension where you could kind of feel some weight, but not quite yet. <laughs> this is really heavy, but the processing power um, for this Alienware laptop is enormous. It can help me uh, facilitate games in the classroom when we teach programming, um, helps me participate in large projects. I can work on anything I need to, but it's just a monster to carry around. <laughs> right. So you kind of have the desktop performance and almost the weight of a desktop carrier. And you'll see later, right. I have this big backpack to carry this around. It's, <laughs> it's interesting. It's both a computer and an exercise program. <laughs> That's right. That's great. Yeah. Um, in regards to that, there are also computers that are very focused on dynamics and mobility. Uh, this Surface Pro, we, we discussed it in a previous episode, same as the Alienware. And it is actually a tablet with a keyboard that is detachable. Now, um, there are a lot of cases in which that would be extremely useful. Uh, a lot of students like to take notes with uh, a pen and paper. And utilizing a tablet with a built-in pen, you could digitize all your notes and have them on your phone, have them on your laptop, do it the cloud, allowing for greater mobility with your notes and not 
having to depend on a notebook. Um, another thing about laptops like these, and there are, there's hundreds online and you can pick which one fits for you and really what meets the needs that you would prefer, um, depending on what you'd like. So touch screens, keyboards, uh, styluses, things like that are an interesting factor to keep in mind as well. And not to jump ahead to a future segment as Ben alluded to earlier about talking about the cloud, what's neat about being a student, say at Chipola College, is we have this wonderful learning management system um, entitled, uh, called Canvas, and it provides the ability to have all your coursework in the cloud, if you will, in this environment that's stored away from you. So you can then use a smart device that's not heavy, that lets you interact as you need to for um, applications, for writing, right. for completing assignments, and that's then stored elsewhere. So uh, with, what's interesting about Chipola is we already have that built in, gives you that flexibility of device selection. So when you make that purchase, you can think more about, as Ben talked about, what you have an interest in, not worry too much about the needs of the college because we have that storage, that operating environment in our cloud environment, if you will, already established, you know, so that learning management system with Canvas really helps make the decision easier, I guess, when you're picking a device. I absolutely agree. Um, in regards to some final words on technical specifications, there are two more topics I would like to discuss, uh, RAM and storage. Now, RAM is called, it's called RAM, and it's a, it's short for random access memory. You can never have enough RAM. You're right. And RAM is essentially how much your computer can run at one time. Now, for example, RAM would be, uh, an application of that would be having 20 tabs open in Chrome. <laughs> Which we've done, we've been busy, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, but have, it's having these programs open, having files open and running and processing. So it's, it's like um, if you had a bucket and the bucket was full of apples. The apples being the processing or the items processed, the RAM would be the bucket, how much it can handle at one time. And in regards to storage, a lot of people mix this up, in fact, uh, storage and memory. Memory is RAM, but storage is how much your computer can hold in total. It's how many files it can have on it, uh, whether they're running or not. Uh, usually computers vary between 128 gigabytes to, they can be one terabyte, two terabytes, which is a massive amount of storage. Depending on what you need, if you have, if you like to store photos or you like to back your phone up, things like that, that you would uh, back up a large amount of data on, you may want to opt for higher storage capacity. What's interesting about the market today is that storage is so affordable. It is. You can buy a computer, say, at any large box store that would meet all your needs for right. very low cost. So RAM, having the ability to multitask, and maybe we think we shouldn't, but we are often guilty of working on one project, another project arrives, and so we're doing multiple things at one time. And that's kind of just life, right? And so RAM helps us do life better, I guess, in a I sense. Agree. Uh, and so that's really where you may need to plan your, your money, plan where you can get the most return for your investment. Very true. Now, that is generally what to look for in terms of the specifications of a computer. Now, in uh, final words, it's really up to what you would prefer in a device. If you prefer more mobility, if you like computers with greater performance, it really depends on exactly what you prefer because in the end, you will be using this laptop or this computer for two to three years, or even longer, if depending on its, its life. Yeah, technology change is happening so fast that yeah, it seems like every two to three years is a good example of when we might migrate, transition to another device. Um, we're now using multiple devices, you know, a smart yes. device, a laptop, um, someday we'll probably have all this in one device, you know, and use an old school technology like Dragon Speak, where we don't even type or text or need our thumbs or fingers. We just say what we need done and, and it'll actually complete that task for us. You can do that today. It's just not perfected. You know, it's right. still being tested. I've seen a lot of people depending uh, pretty greatly on their smartwatch now. Uh, personally, I don't have one, but 
a lot of people can send texts, they can reply to emails, they can control their smart home, uh, tons of tons of things. And uh, that's another device we may uh, research at some point. I in thought another the same episode. thing. You said like three <laughs> topics there for the future. Well, this has been great, Ben. I think I'll kind of pack up now. Can I uh, carry that for you? Oh, no, it's fine. I, oh, I have this. Let me <laughs> pack up my heavy laptop here. All right, take it easy, Ben. Thank you.